Okay, we're going to look at one more way to create an array where we can create an array from the content of a text file. Um, we'll make use of the split here because we're going to basically read the text file as one big string and then we're going to split that string by the uh, the new line character basically. So every every line will become an element in the array. All right, so I have uh, to our little sandbox here, I added this webcolors.txt file. And basically, yeah, each line of the file, the goal is that each line will become an array element. Right? Now, to do that, we need to use the fetch command, where we're going to fetch this, um, this file. So let's go to our main.js. Oops, I forgot to do this. Uh, create arrays from a text file. So the first thing I'm going to do actually is just create my colors array um, as an empty array. Actually, no, I'm just going to define it as a global variable. Um, and we need to do that because we're going to initialize the, this variable inside of another function. So we need a global so that we can use it in other places. Um, and then there's this fetch command. Okay, now this gets a little bit, there's some advanced stuff here with like promises and synchronous and asynchronous code, but I'm just going to show you the basic way that this works and, and hopefully uh, we can just use it. All right, so we do the fetch command and what we do in here is do the name of the file. So webcolors.txt. And that's going to fetch the content of this. And then we do this dot then. Okay, and that's where if you notice as I type then, it's this promise and response thing. Basically, it'll fetch this file, and once it's done fetching it, it'll then do whatever we put inside of here. Which, oh, I haven't decided how I was going to teach you this. Do I teach you the shorthand method or the longer way? Maybe I'll show you both. Um, let's do this. I'm going to say um, convert data, which is going to be the name of a function. Okay, so let's define that function down here convert data and I'm gonna give this a parameter raw data and basically the fetch function once it fetches the content of this file it's gonna pass the contents of this file into the convert data function which will get stored inside of this parameter now I'm gonna console.log the raw data and let's see what that looks like now in order for this to work you have to be using live server if you try to open this up just with the file, the index.html, it won't work. Um, the fetch command needs to fetch from a server. So it has to have that live server running. Okay, so I'm going to save that. Let's go back to here. Oops, go back to here, open this up. Yeah, okay. So this raw data is a response, right? This promise gave me a response, and it's a basic response from this URL and all sorts of information, okay, true status 200, like it loaded it and everything's fine and there's all sorts of stuff in here. But what we need to do with this response is we need to convert it into a string, right? This is a text file with text in it. I want to convert it to a string. To do that, we go raw data dot text um, and then parentheses because there's a method called text. So I can call the text method on this response and it should Give me, oh dear, that's not what I expected. Okay, let's try this. I'm going to go, I think it's the timing thing. Uh, let's go let um, str data be assigned raw data.txt. Oh, I don't think this is going to work either. Yeah, it just gives me this promise thing. Because this, this takes some time, and it's like, I, I will do this, so trust me. Okay, so here's here's what we need to do. We're actually going to return raw data.txt from this function. Because then what we do is we do then, we do another dot then, and then I'm going to call a function called process data. Function process data, and this should give me string data. And now I'm going to console.log the string data. Okay, so basically this raw data.txt, it, it starts doing its work, and once it's done, it'll return to this function and pass the data into this str data. And I know this gets a, this, there's a little bit going on here, but hopefully this will work. And here we go. Now we get 
Um, the raw data got converted to text data. We returned it and it got passed into this function and stored into this parameter. So we now have this as a big string. Yay! Okay, now, now the, the last part to this, and then just to make this look a little nicer, actually if I save, oh no, okay, well sometimes you'll see it like this. No, Prettier doesn't like that. Okay, fine. Um, okay, so now that we've got this big string, we're just going to use the split. We want to turn it into an array. Now, what do we split it by? Well, you can't see it, but at the end of every line, there's a slash M. And depending on your operating system, there might be a slash R slash M. Slash N is new line and slash R is carriage return, I think. Some operating systems in their files do just a slash N, some do a slash R slash N. We're going to start by trying to just do, and when we can't see it here, just by hitting enter, it puts that invisible character there. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go colors is assigned string data dot split and we're going to split according to the slash n character and let's see if that works um, of course i don't see anything i need to go console.log colors save and oh see here we go so it split it right i got the string the string lavender but it has that slash r at the end as well Okay, so for me to fix that, I would do slash r slash n. And now we've got just the words. Awesome. Lavender, thistle. Okay, 140. I think that's right. 140 colors. Awesome. Cool. Okay, now, like I said, some operating systems just have the slash n and not the slash r. So there is a way to deal with that using something called a regular expression. Um, I'm just going to pause for a second because I got to double check my notes to make sure I'm doing this right. I'll be back in a second. Okay, I think I got it here. Um, basically, what we need to do for the regular expression is is wrap our expression, which is this, inside of two slashes like that. Okay, so we do the forward slash and then another forward slash, and then what goes in between those is called the regular expression. And it allows us to use, these regular expressions are like a whole, we could do a whole unit on regular expressions. There's all sorts of things you can do with them. Basically, it's, it's used to match kind of patterns. So this question mark basically indicates, um, so if I didn't have it there, it would try to match the slash r slash n. But by putting a question mark here, it means that there could be a slash r or there could not be a slash r. And then there must be a slash n. So this covers the case where there's only a slash n, and then, um, or there's a slash r and a slash n, and it covers both those cases. So if I save this, I get the same results here. Just to make sure there's no hidden characters here, let's print out um, color zero, and I wanna do color zero dot length. Uh, the dot length just makes sure one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah, that there's not like a hidden character that we're catching it. Okay, so anyway, that's how we can do it here. The last thing I want to point out is um, I often get students that are like, okay, I did this and I did my console.log colors over here and it's undefined. Why? What, what, what's going on? Why is it undefined? So the reason for that is because when we do this fetch, um, JavaScript starts the process of fetching this file and then it just continues the rest of the program. Right, so it starts fetching, and then it'll go to this console.log and print it out, but it doesn't. It may not have finished loading the file, converting it, processing, and splitting it. So right now it's undefined. So you have to make sure that you don't try to access these the, the colors um, until it's actually been created here. Okay, so often often it's fine because you'll just use an event listener, right? If I did document dot add event listener, click. I'm just going to go test, function test, and we put this console.log colors in there and save it, right? So the fetch, now I've loaded this program. By the time I'm talking, this fetch has finished its job. Now when I click, there is my, my colors, right? If I try to do it really fast, nope, 
it, it, I can't click fast enough. It, it loads it faster than I can I can click. But yeah, if you just you, you got to make sure you give it a little bit of time so that it does this stuff here. Now the only thing I'm going to do here, I haven't taught you guys arrow functions or anything yet, but just to clean up this data, um, instead of defining these functions like this, you can actually do a shorthand notation where you create an arrow function. Arrow functions um, are you do like this and then all I need to do I can define the parameters in here so I'll go raw data and then we're just gonna go raw data dot text and I don't even have to do return it was an arrow function if I have a single line of code it automatically returns it and then here I can do another arrow function and I'm just gonna call this data and in here we're gonna do the colors is assigned data dot split slash r question mark slash n forward slash like so and you don't have to do it this way there we go now it does the dot then dot then because it got too long so this is just a more condensed version it does the exact same thing it's gonna fetch this file once the fetch is done it's gonna pass the contents of the file into this raw data we convert this raw data into text once that's done, it passes that text data into this data parameter, which we then split um, and, and save it into our colors here. Um, and then we'll do our document.add event listener. Click test. I should have kept that. Function test. Console.log colors. And hopefully that worked. Ta da! There it is. Okay, so like I said, this just is a little more concise with these arrow functions. Um, it works the other way too, but there you go. Okay, that is getting a text file and turning it into an array where each line becomes an array element. All right, hope that made sense. Take care and we'll see you next video.